Jamie O'Rourke and the Puka by Tommy DePaola. Jamie O'Rourke, Eileen said. Wake up. I've something to tell you. Jamie, who was the laziest man in all of Ireland, was sleeping in the warm sun outside their cottage. His wife gave him a shake. Wake up, wake up, for heaven's sake, Eileen said again. I'm not sleeping, Jamie answered with a yawn. Sure, I was sitting here thinking. Now, Jamie, please listen, Eileen replied. Do you remember that I'm going up to visit my sister Kathleen and her family to help with the new baby? Jamie let out a snore. Eileen poked him. What are you doing, woman? Can't you see I'm right in the middle of solving a great problem? Jamie answered. Well, now that all the fine thoughts I was having have clear flown out of me head, you might as well tell me what's going on. Eileen explained to Jamie, for the fourteenth time most likely, that she was off to Kathleen's and would be there for the better part of a week. Now, Eileen went on, I've cleaned the cottage from top to bottom. I've cooked all kinds of good things and put them in the larder. All you have to do is the washing up each night and give a quick swipe of the broom every now and then. Well, well, me darling, you're too good for the likes of me, said Jamie. But don't you be worrying. I'll take good care of everything so's you won't even know you've been away. Now give a kiss and be off with you. Down the road went Eileen O'Rourke. All of this commotion has made me as tired as a farmer plowing five fields, Jamie said to himself. I think I'll just have me a lie down. And sure, isn't that a sweet idea? If I stay in bed and only get up for a bite, I'll not be dirty in a thing. So Jamie O'Rourke climbed into bed, even though the sun was high in the sky, and fell fast asleep. Jamie! Jamie O'Rourke! Three voices called outside the door. Where are ye, man? We heard Eileen's off to her sister's, so's we have come to keep ye company. Jamie woke up and recognized the voices of his cronies, Patrick, Michael, and Seamus. Jamie got out of bed, and since he hadn't taken off his clothes, he didn't have to be putting them on again. Come in, come in, lads, Jamie said, opening the door. The sun was sinking behind the hills. Well, what do we have here? Jamie asked, pointing at a crockery jug. This is the finest cider you'll taste this side of the county, Patrick said. Get some mugs, Michael said. And some grub, Seamus said. He knew that Eileen wouldn't leave Jamie without plenty of good things to eat. When the food was on the table, and mugs, plates, and knives and forks too, they all sat down. They had themselves a fine old time, laughing and eating until it was time to go home. Well, the three friends told Jamie, we'll be heading down the hill and you'll be wanting to get your rest, Jamie. Tomorrow you'll be having a busy morning cleaning up all this mess. Aye, that's the truth, lads, Jamie said, looking around. But the mere sight of the messy cottage made him the most tired man in all of Ireland, as well as the laziest, so he went to bed. Jamie was fast asleep when a noise woke him. It was the sound of the cottage door and the clatter of hooves on the stone floor. Jamie opened one eye and took a peek. And what a sight he saw! He couldn't tell if it was a man or a donkey standing there. Whatever it was, it had long ears and a tail. Saints preserve us, Jamie whispered. I may as well begin first as last, the creature who was a puka said out loud to himself. He stirred the fire, poured some water into a big pot, and put it on the fire. As soon as the water was hot, the puka washed the dishes, the mugs, and the cutlery. He put the leftovers in the proper dishes and back into the larder. He swept the floor and gave the fire a good raking. Then the puka left the house with such a slam of the door, Jamie nearly fell out of bed. The next evening, when Patrick, Michael, and Seamus came by with a fresh jug of cider, they were amazed to see the cottage as if Eileen had been there. How did this all happen? 
they asked. Well, me lads, Jamie replied. I got up with the birds and cleaned it all up just like any good husband would do when his darling wife is away. Patrick, Michael, and Seamus looked at each other. They didn't really believe Jamie, but there it was. So the four friends had another grand time just like the night before. When his friends had gone, leaving even more of a mess, Jamie climbed into bed, but instead of falling asleep, he waited under the covers. Sure enough, the door opened and the puka was back, cleaning up everything fast and furiously. This is luck indeed, Jamie said to himself. Why, with this creature coming and cleaning up, I can have me cronies here every night, every night, that is, until Aileen comes home. And that is what he did. Night after night, Jamie, Patrick, Michael, and Seamus had a grand old time, making a grand old mess. And every night, the puka came in and set things to right. By the end of the week, Jamie was curious about this accommodating creature, so he decided to stay up and have a chat with him. He was a little scared when the puka came in and went right to the fire, but he took a deep breath, swallowed a mouthful of cider for courage, and spoke up. Now then, sir, if I am not taking a liberty, might I be knowing who you are and why you are so kind as to do the cleaning up each night after me friends and meself? The puka turned and looked at Jamie. I'll tell you, and you're welcome to it. A long time back, I was the laziest servant that ever was clothed and fed, and did no work for it. When my time came for the other world, this is the punishment I was given for my lazy ways, to find a place each night to labor in. As I was wandering by the other night, I looked in the window of your cottage. As sure as can be, you needed my help. It's not so bad, for at least I'm out of the cold. But when I finish my work, the saints preserve us. That cold wind goes right through me bones. It wouldn't be so hard if I had me a nice warm coat. Well, well, Jamie thought. I can probably help the poor creature out. The next night, after his friends left, Jamie sat and waited for the puka. Eileen would be home tomorrow, but Jamie wasn't worried. He knew the puka would do an excellent job of cleaning up, especially when Jamie gave him the old coat he had pulled from the trunk. As soon as the puka came in, Jamie showed him the coat. He helped him into it and buttoned it up. The puka went to the mirror. He was most pleased with what he saw. I am much obliged to you, Jamie O'Rourke. You have made me happy at last. Now I'll be saying good night to you. The puka turned to go. Wait, wait, Jamie cried out. You're leaving too soon. What about the washing up and the sweeping? Ah, the puka said. Now it's your turn. My punishment was only to last until some kind creature like yourself liked the way I'd done my duty and rewarded me for it. Goodbye, and you'll see no more of me. The puka left, and there was Jamie with the mess. Or, should we say, Eileen. For when she arrived the next morning and looked around the cottage, she said, Oh, Jamie O'Rourke, what do you have to say for yourself? But Jamie said nothing. He was too busy thinking he shouldn't have been in such a hurry to reward that ungrateful puka. <laughs>